Knowledge Charity welcomes you to a module on EMI and alternating currents. In this module, we will shortly have an overview of the Lenz law and how it abides by the law of conservation of energy. What is a motional electromotive force? How does it get generated? And finally, what are eddy currents? The first sub-module that we are going to view is the Lenz law and how it abides by the law of conservation of energy. What does the Lenz law state? Lenz law states that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it tends to produce a current which opposes a change in the magnetic flux that produced it. Very simply, we can say that E is equal to negative d phi by dt. We all know that a changing magnetic flux produces an electric current in a circuit that is exposed to that change. So, we can say that there will be d phi by dt that is generated whenever a circuit or an arrangement is exposed to a changing magnetic field. Lenz's law states that that change in flux is always opposite in direction such that a magnetic flux that is changing produces an opposite pole and resists that change. Let's say, suppose an open circuit is placed instead of a closed loop while performing this experiment. Will there be any change? If at all there is any change, how do you account for the same? Probably you can have a thought process over this and arrive at a solution and mail to us at gyandan at gmail.com. We have got an experienced set of faculty who will be helping you to overcome all your doubts. You can mail to us on any topic or any subject and our teachers are here to take you and give you a, give proper guidance. So, if there is some law, we need to check out whether it is a valid law or not. In case of Lenz's law, we will prove it by a counter proof method or we will first assume the opposite of the law to be true and ultimately arrive at a conclusion that the opposite doesn't hold. So, the original law must be true. So, let's assume that we have a circular coil and a magnet whose north pole is pushed towards the coil. So, if we are going to assume that Lenz's law doesn't hold, that means a south pole generating EMF must be present across the loop. Lenz's law states that an opposing force that opposes the change is generated. In this case, if at all Lenz's law holds, a north pole must be generated in order to ripple. But we assume that a south pole is generated because we have assumed that Lenz's law is false. So, in our assumption, the north pole must be attracted towards the south pole and just a small push to the magnet to get it running forever. But this is not how the nature is. If at all this is going to happen, we will have an ever increasing quantity of kinetic energy that is generated. This means the law of conservation of energy is violated. Therefore, we can say that an opposing force is generated to hold the law of conservation of energy which is sufficient enough for us to prove the Lenz's law. 
Suppose I need to find the direction of the electric field that is generated due to the magnet. We can see two figures. If at all the north pole is taken towards the circuit, we can have the direction of the electric field to resemble an N as shown in figure A. Similarly, there is a small error in the figure. It should be south pole moving towards the magnet. We will have the electric field or the electric current running in the direction symbolizing the letter S and this can be very easily remembered. We can very easily expect this to be a two or three point question in our board examination. A diagram which substantiates your argument for this law needs to be provided. Probably you can take up the diagram which we have shown here. Probably you can have a look at more information on Lenz's law which is of course beyond the scope of this syllabus on Wikipedia. The link is provided. The next topic will be motional electromotive force. So we are seeing a figure where a rectangular strip is available and a rod PQ is moving on that rectangular strip. So whenever such a diagram, scientific notated diagram is shown, we should be able to infer what it means. Because based on this concept, we might have some questions that will just represent the diagram and we need to infer what it represents. So, this metal rod PQ moves with uniform velocity towards the left with on the SRMN rod. Now, we have a magnetic field that runs into the plane of the paper. So, that is why a cross is represented. According to the theory of magnetic flux, we can say that the total flux over this arrangement is BA, where A is the area of the arrangement. And in this case, it is L into X. In this case, it is L into X. But we have X which is constantly changing due to the moving rod PQ. So, if we have L and B as constant, and differentiate x with respect to time, we get epsilon is equal to minus b l into dx by dt. dx by dt is nothing but velocity. Therefore, we can say that epsilon is equal to b l b. You might wonder where this negative sign has vanished suddenly all of a sudden. That has vanished because we have taken the direction of velocity to be opposite to the direction of normal convention. Here again, there is some foot to your brain. This is also an electric charge moving in a magnetic field, very similar to a moving coil galvanometer. So therefore, the electrons that are passing through this rod might have a Lorentz force that is being experienced. So, why don't we take some extra effort to prove motional electromotive force through Lorentz force? This might be a good assignment or a good or high order thinking skills question that might pop up in an examination. We know that CBSE is giving 10% of weightage to high order thinking skills, HOTS. The last topic of today's presentation is eddy currents. The currents that are caused due to this changing magnetic field, that is the electromotive force, is in the direction similar to that of a swirling eddy in a water or a river. Thus, we call these currents as eddy currents. As shown in the figure, when we allow a copper plate to oscillate in magnetic field, eddy currents are caused and the oscillating plate gets damped due to the eddy current. And these eddy currents can be reduced by slotting the copper plate to cause a slotted rectangle so that the area of eddy currents get reduced. In fact, eddy currents are 
a necessary evil because in the day to day life we have got pretty a number of you no know, necessities which eddy currents provide to us now we can see few of those examples now so that you can have a elaborate study of them from the internet later magnetic braking the trains like monorails when they are extremely fast eddy currents used to create that damping effect so that the magnetic brake works similarly electromagnetic damping certain galvanometers from continuous oscillations due to voltage fluctuation are damped using eddy currents and we have got induction stoves and electric power meters that also work based on eddy currents i hope this was a useful module for us and for you and if there is any doubt that needs to be clarified you can either comment below the video or write to us at nyandan@gmail.com it would be very great if you could subscribe and support our channel so that the knowledge which has reached you now reaches to many thanks a lot and please come again to knowledge charity